Die Motherfucker Die was was this weird thing for us. It was part of why the band got released from Epic Records. Like the World Trade Center fell. We were pushing oh. Die Mother. Died. I didn't we know that. On this trajectory to be this very commercially viable yeah. band with that spin me round song. Yeah. World Trade Center fell. We're on Sony Music. We're pushing Die Mother Die. And they're like, Yeah, we're not about that life. Like, good yeah. luck. Guys. Oh, I didn't know so that. that it was a, it was it was an incredibly uh at that time you would have looked at it like it was the worst thing I ever did, the biggest mistake of my life. But then in retrospect, when I became an independent artist that song and that connectivity to those soldiers was something that I just, it took on a whole life of its own and was a big part of me having that very successful independent career. Gotcha. Um, I just, it's just something you never could have planned for. It was a, a turn in the road for dope. And uh, it's something that I'm, I'm very grateful for. Didn't plan it. Um, but I do, man, I have such a, a, a strange and unique and almost like just unbreakable bond with soldiers that went to Iraq during that time and, and risked their lives and lost their buddies. And somehow I'm intertwined in it, dude. Like but somehow it, I was it, there it, with them, but I you, wasn't. Battleline podcast, um, man, I was actually just looking at our YouTube and I, I got to thank you guys. We're approaching 5,000 followers on there. So please subscribe wherever that you're listening or watching. That stuff helps us out tremendously. The first time we had Edsel Dope on for 156, it got such great feedback that, yeah, it was like, let's do this again. And you will not be disappointed with this interview with both Edsel Dope and Tony Campos. We get into a lot. No, and, and I just having rockers on, and they are rockers from groups that I used to listen to in the global on terror. I just love listening to their stories because it, it reminds me of places I was at when I heard their music, and it does take me back. And it's, it's just cool to put faces with people that I used to get amped up to before I used to go out on ops or used to come back and listen to to get to amp myself down a little, a little bit, but. I know it's going to be a really good interview and I'm, I'm excited for it. You know, I, I love talking to my military buddies, but this is something that's kind of out of my wheelhouse, but not so much. It's on the side of my wheelhouse. And I just, I just dig, I dig the conversation. So yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. If you're a regular listener of this podcast, I think, you know, for me, I mean, as much as I love interviewing Navy SEALs, Army Rangers, MARSOC operators, I completely nerd out over this. I mean, this is entirely my wheelhouse. Uh, and that's why I love having guys on like Don Dockin or, yeah. uh, you know, any of the artists that we've had on. But before we get into this, I actually wanted to cover a piece of news. And we usually don't cover news going on in the rock industry or anything. But we've had Corey Taylor on this podcast yeah. and also friends of this podcast are Jigsaw Youth. And they were those those ladies were completely amped to be opening for oh, Corey Taylor. Man, because I know. An up and coming band. That is an opportunity of that's a lifetime. Huge. Well, the unfortunate thing, as uh, many of you do know by now, is that Corey Taylor has canceled this tour. And I pulled up on Instagram his statement uh, that I just wanted to read. He wrote, uh, it is with a heavy heart that I announced the cancellation of my upcoming North American tour. For the past several months, of uh, my mental and physical health have been breaking down, and I reached a place that was unhealthy for my family and I. I know this decision will come as a shock to some and may be regarded as unpopular by others. But after taking a hard look at where I am and where I was going, I needed to pull myself back up and be home with my family for the time being. Those of you who bought tickets and VIP packages for this upcoming run will get a full refund. I send my love to the fans, my band, my family and friends, and everyone who's helped me get here thus far. I promise I'm doing everything I can to be healthy as, as healthy as I can be. Until then, my apologies to everyone uh, we would have seen on the tour and hopefully we'll see you again down the line, Corey Taylor. Um, so I bring this up because Ben, for one, there seems to be a lot going on uh, in this guy's life and in the camp. I mean, before we had Corey Taylor on was when Chris Fenn was uh, let go from the group. And then more recently, Jay Weinberg was let go from the group, which fans were shocked by because they really felt that guy uh, breathed him, uh, you know, was a breath of fresh air to this group. Uh, but then beyond that, man, he is truly just a guy who never stops. I, I believe Slipknot has been to like Australia twice this past year. Yeah, and then he's done his own solo tour. And it's definitely not for the money. I mean, he emphasized to us when he was on that with his solo project, that's entirely self-funded. I mean, the money is in Slipknot. 
he's playing smaller venues with his solo uh solo work so i think he's just a guy who never stops and the funny not funny but the crazy thing about it i guess i would say is i remember we ended that interview with you yeah. saying to Corey, <laughs> i remember crazy. your exact words you said you were like brother you're on the you're on the bad side of 50 you may <laughs> want to slow it down a little and he had some analogy with the waves and he was like i i know how to you know take it to the limit but not go past that limit and it seems like you know you have to be tough to kind of say all right i i am taking it past the limit and it's taking a toll on my mental health and and physical health and i'm sure they're probably losing a lot of money uh canceling a tour like this kind yeah. of last minute but uh, you know, it's important that we have these guys still with us. And if you're in a dark place, you, you, you sometimes need some help. Well, I, and I, that, I think that was just more of a coincidence than anything. It's coincidental, but I, just saying it. And I, I don't tour like he, you know, actually maybe in the past I did Conus when things started coming out. And that just means Conus in the United States, not going overseas uh, on the deployments. Not talking about that. I'm talking about when the movie, I mean, doing 70, 80 speaking events a year and, and just all over the place and being away from home. And for and, them, that's nothing, by the way, 70, uh, 80. This is a guy who never stops. Well, that's what I'm saying. And, <laughs> yeah. and I mean, I'm, I mean, over time you were, I mean, you know, now you, you know, how I am. we talk offline. Yeah. Man, oh, I'm absolutely. tired. I, I don't want to do more than 10 a year anymore. Cause I just, I'm tired. I need to be home. And, and you just get to that point where you hit that point, where like, man, money, who gives a shit? Uh, do I have enough money to pay my bills and to last for a little while? So if I can take a break, I can take a break. Well, yeah, I'm going to take a break because I need to be with my family or I just need to be home or I just need to have silence. Because you know this just as because of me and you and our business relationship, I'll just turn my phone off for like a day or two, like like dude i've been trying to get a hold of you dude. I, but you understand you you, you understand yeah. i'm not i'm also not someone who's like connected to my and, phone 24 and that's and that's so. a, but that's I, why it kind of works i, I guess I, I i'm i'm glad he i'm glad he is and taking care of himself because we don't need to lose another chris cornell and I, i'm not putting those guys on pedestals i'm not believe me I, no way i don't do that but they do, especially especially within the veteran community. Those are the guys that we used to listen to that remind us of things that we did downrange. And we want them to be here because we want to still hear their songs. We want them. We it's felt like we do like like we have a connection with them because of their music, because of Slipknot's music, because of of Stone Sour's music. Because I heard Stone Sour when I was in Kandahar, and I, I'm listening to Slipknot every time before I go out for in bag and. and and we don't want to lose those guys. Chris Cornell, man, sang the 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 best song in the world that people have never heard, which is uh, which is part of Thirteen Hours because of politics. But damn, that song's awesome. And you know when awesome. he died, you, you guys have an unreleased. I never knew this. You did not. Hey, no, Chris it's, it's song. It, Chris Chris Cornell saying saying the la the 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 song the the main song. Okay, the title I, song when you said we've time. never heard it, I'm like, whoa. No, right. no, I'm I'm crazy. saying the reason many of people that don't listen sure, to this sure. show have never heard because uh 13 hours to hates on a hillary and obama whatever <clears throat> but that song is amazing and when he died you know it was cool meeting him in dallas when the movie premiered and it was but it also was like man that guy the words are speaking to me and every word in there i pictured myself in benghazi shooting on the walls and, and then he passed away it's like man dude lost another and it, it's like a piece of I, I it's like a, i want to say a teammate go that far it's like a piece of benghazi died and that moment died there being on that wall fighting and so yeah I, i'm I, I it i know maybe i'm taking it to an extreme for some i don't give a shit i want those guys around as long as possible because i do have a connection i think a lot of other veterans and even people that may have gone through hardships and have gotten through hardships with their music have a connection with them so yeah take a break if you're a true fan Get your money back. He's giving you your money back. Get him on the next time around when he goes next year or two years, whenever he decides to. And it's going to be just as good a show. But give the guy a fucking break and let him be home with his family. And Jigsaw, you yeah, it sucks. Because if you really did, like, it seems like they're on the cusp. And all of a sudden, you know, this is going to take him off. But, you know, you never know. This might be this. Everything that happens, happens for a reason. I do believe that this is a blessing in disguise. Who knows when that blessing is going to reveal itself, but it will. So just them, they're workaholics. You can follow them on social media. You're going to see how, how hard they work. They're still going to, they're still going to hook up with somebody and have that shot. And it may be with Corey Taylor when he decides to get back on the road. So man, I, 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 I'm, I'm happy to hear that he's taking time off to be with his family and he's doing it the right way. And I'm happy to hear that he's respecting his fans and saying, Hey dude, 
here's your refunds. I mean, that's a lot of money to refund, dude. dude. And and we'll catch you on the next boat. And like I said, Jigsaw Youth, just stay the course, keep busting your ass, keep working hard, and your break will come. And this is a blessing in disguise. We don't know what that blessing is, but it will come later. So that's my two cents. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to cover that, guys. Um, but before we get into our interview with Edsel Dope and Tony Campos, uh, you know, the funny thing is, of course, the band Dope, the namesake of Dope. Uh, <laughs> if you know anything about the history, it, it, they were selling Dope at one point. And we are certainly not selling Dope, but we're selling CBD, which will not get you high. No. Uh, and, and actually, as a guy, right, I don't drink, I don't do drugs or any of that. I was reluctant to try CBD for the first time. But it has really helped me, especially that brain blend, uh, getting a great night's sleep, helping veterans coming back with post-traumatic stress. So check out their stuff. Check out their Mellow Magnesium as well. Uh, nourish your entire body with Ned's proprietary super blend with three forms of chelated magnesium, uh, GABA, L-theanine, and over 70 trace minerals. So yeah, all different products that you're absolutely going to love. Pain, we pain stand by bomb. them. Pain relief, relief bomb is amazing, awesome. especially in these winter months when it gets oh, cold. Yeah. I start to lock up. I use that on my neck, my back, and I'm back in shape, back in yeah. action. Oh, dude, I so, still I use it immense. I, I uh, all that stuff. I know I cut you off there. No, I, no, still no. Want, I didn't want to forget that because I I use that every day, especially doing my rehab, and it's it's tremendous. So don't forget the pain relief bomb, but everything else also is tremendous. So. Yeah, and that menthol has a great kick to it. So yeah. check it all out. It's uh, helloned.com slash battleline. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D dot com slash battleline. Without further ado, Edsel Dope and Tony Campos. From Kansas City to New York City, from planet Earth to extraterrestrial life in space, a podcast with no equal, engaged in unconventional warfare through your speakers and headphones. This is a show about embracing the suck, conquering your demons, and finding God in the face of adversity. Chris Tonto Peranto. Switch is on. Mother I'm going to shoot you in the face. Ian Scotto. You know, Ian and I have been dating for a long time. You are now tuned into the Battle Line Podcast. The Switch is on, Battle Line Podcast. Very excited for this episode. Yeah. Edsel Dope and Tony Campos. Uh, Edsel Dope was last on with us for episode 156, which went over tremendously. I mean, got picked up by like all the major rock sites uh, and, and great feedback. If you go to the YouTube, like the comments saying one of the favorite interviews people have heard of Edsel. Um, so executive producer of Static X, founder and singer, multi-instrumentalist for Dope. And on with us this time is the original bassist and current bassist of Static X and also for Fear Factory, Tony Campos. So great yeah. to have both you guys on. We're psyched for this. Yeah, thanks for having us, man. Yeah, that's dude. a serious that's a serious beard bro every time i got a compliment you on that thing that thing that looks thing is... the exact same. when I, we were going to iraq all the time and we had your videos the beard has not changed and i can't because of youtube demonetizing us i want to drop f-bombs left and right but i have to wait to the middle of the show to do that so i'll try to keep it clean here to first. Yeah. But man that thing hasn't changed since 2004 oh. <laughs> Watch you. It, it, Jeez, it's gotten grayer. It's gotten grayer. That's about it. Uh, well, <laughs> but, but it doesn't grow any more any more than this. Right? Like, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, it, it's 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 an honor. And guys, like I said, I I've been listening to to both the you both of you guys since my deployments. And I know Ian talked to you a little bit about you know the die motherfucker. I, I gotta say I, YouTube. I gotta say because that's what's <laughs> the, the name of the, the song. song so. The name of the damn. But you know how. 
just not that I would grab shit, but just how we used to get amped up to that kind of stuff. So sure. It, it's cool. And, you know, of course, <laughs> Static X, we got amped up to damn near everything before going out the gate. So, guys, thank you for coming on. And I just want to say thank you. And I'm here just for the stories because I know he's got tons of questions. I just there's so much similarity after speaking to a lot of people that Ian brings on the show, rock guys between you guys on the road and us deploying just the problems, just the, the, the stressors, the, the, the long days, the toxic relationships, just everything. So I love hearing your stories because it reminds me of when I used to deploy. I, I'm old and I'm old as dirt now, broken hip, broken leg. So I ain't deploying anymore, but hearing your guys' stories still out there, just honestly, it reminds me of some of them went back when I was, Back when I was hard, back when I was tough. No, I'm not anymore, but back when I was cool. So I'm here for the stories. I, w- I want to hear them Yeah, all. well, we're not so cool anymore either. <laughs> I'm fine with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we, we've definitely had, we've had our our adventures uh, in the past. <laughs> we don't get into too many more adventures these days. <laughs> it's right. hard. The, the body don't handle it as well, does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, man. I, I can't yeah. handle the hangovers well, we, anymore, man. Well, we could complain about jumping around on stage and and drinking too much, but at, at least nobody's shooting at us, dude. Right? So. Uh, yeah. I, 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 dude, yeah. The amount the you guys, going up around you, you know. It, it, it can get a little hairy, but you know, it's it's still okay. You're right. There's no comparison. <laughs> trying to fucking yeah. play. There's no comparison, like, ah, bro. Thing, but but damn. No. You know, Although. Although, if you want, if you want a story uh, on this last tour we did, uh, where were we in? Uh, uh, somewhere in Texas, um, after the show, we, we get off stage and our, our uh, stage manager is like, everybody get in the dressing room, get down. There's an active shooter. So, yeah, there was actually somebody out, out in the parking lot shooting somebody. Not, so did, they, 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 they had us huddled in the in the dressing no room. Sh- and, uh, no shit. You know, do you they guys, turned, turned you off guys the lights like, and we were on the floor. So, I, I was going to ask one, you guys. There's one instance where somebody was, they weren't necessarily shooting at us, but they weren't shooting. But, but <laughs> I was just going to ask, do you guys worry about that? You know, ever since like Dimebag's Arrow, like do you guys have people who are armed security on the road with you? Because, yeah, I mean, Dime Dimebag was playing clubs the same size that you guys are playing and i think ever since that instance people are like anything could happen an active shooter you know and and also you you can't carry at these venues so i do wonder about that i mean the biggest difference is that most most uh i mean the the venue where dime was taken uh is a bit dated you know, like uh, it was a really small club, very lax security, just because that's what the time frame sort of called for. I think since then and since a lot of the other craziness that's happened and and fortunately for this tour was Static X7 Dust and Dope were kind of in that next level of facility. Yeah. So there's a bit more built in security. They wand people as they come in. So I would say that in general, it's not something that we really think about, but <clears throat> I would be lying if I said that that it didn't cross our minds a few times during the first um, reunion memorial tour Static X was doing in 2019 when you literally had a small group of people that hated what Static X was doing yeah. and didn't think that it was appropriate for Static X to continue without Wayne and said some pretty threatening, fucked up shit online. But again, it's online. But that's very similar to what happened to Dime. And, uh, you know, the 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 guy who murdered Dime was, you know, mentally ill. And no one really knows what happened because that that guy was obviously uh, killed at uh, at the at the same time but the word on the street was that you know this was a guy that had a a a deep connection to pantera and that somehow pantera's breakup you know was was a contributing factor to him being there with his mission that day so you know when you hear stuff like that and then you know you have a band and a I don't want to call it similar situation, but sort of similar situation. Um, you you can start to let your imagination get a little wild. So there was a time where it was like, you know, who the fuck knows, man? You, you, right. you know, people are nuts. Um, but I would say that in general, you know, we're not uh, uh, 
we're not Kanye West. We're not <laughs> we're not walking around with bulletproof cars and <laughs> yeah. you know, we're just playing rock and roll and hoping that uh, you know, the energy of the universe is is on point. But yeah. you guys know, dude, you can go to the toy store and hear shots and some crazy person decided that, that was the day that they were just gonna, you know, let their insanity out on the rest of the world. So I'm a believer that you just do what you can, but you can't live in fear and yeah. and you you know, it is what it is. You, you take the precautions you can and then, you know, you just live your life and do do what you do, man. Yeah. You know? We'll see. I think that was part of the, the reason that uh, you guys had that zero dude start wearing a helmet, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, that's no one knows, but it's Cavalar. <laughs> it's, right? I was, I was yeah. gonna, I was gonna ask that next. So, it's like, what, so is a ballistic that? face mask, <laughs> right? <laughs> that is a that is a cold ass ballistic face mask. I would have liked to have had one of those running around. That's yeah, right? that's some scary <laughs> as shit. But yeah, right. Maybe yeah. hoping soon. Is it, it, is, it, it is it is ian i know we jumped forward i just that's how i'm all over the place ian ian's that's why ian's the master he's got a script i'm like a fucking cat chasing a red light i'm just bouncing yeah, so right. ian we're it started off because i know well, we, we weren't gonna start I, there and i just started no you know what i was gonna ask about you. though actually because just because it's where the conversation went and we'll get into everything including the current tour um, yeah. The next leg of this current tour, the new album coming out later this month, which I'm I'm absolutely psyched for. But yeah, Ed's still saying that there were people online who were threatened by the band coming back together without Wayne. And there was a lot of crazy stuff said online of, you know, I, I Ed's when I spoke about it actually after we recorded, Um, you know, not to say names, but there were guys in bands, even people I knew, you know, claiming, oh, Wayne hated these guys. Why are they doing a tour? You know, now all of a sudden memorializing him. So I, I would be cool if you could kind of set the record straight because I know Edsel kind of spoke about it. The reason you guys disbanded, you know, especially you who who own part of the rights to the name was really Wayne's Wayne's wife, right? Yeah, or, I mean, or you know, <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it, it was a, a combination of both, you know. I mean, uh, you know, Wayne's addiction was a big part of that. And uh, unfortunately, his wife... Uh, enabled also an addict the and was also an addict and so you know they fed off each other's addictions and uh you, you know it's hard enough to reach an addict on on their own but when the only person they'll listen to is also an addict and enabling the behavior you know it's it's virtually impossible to reach them you know yeah and that's yeah that's, this is it, it's it's really kind of a a stupid uh perspective for anyone to take like anyone that that wants to point the finger at anybody else other than the person that is exhibiting the unquestionable destructive behavior is amazing to me like anything i've read of like you know people that have any anger or hatred towards static x or tony he was like who are you fucking mad at bro and i say this with all due respect because Anybody that is close to this situation can attest to how much effort and energy and love I have contributed to Static X and to Wayne's memory over the last several years. Um, but that doesn't stop me from living in reality and, and acknowledging the reality, which was that if you're going to be mad at anyone because Wayne is not here participating in everything that is happening, you need to be mad at him because he's the one who ultimately took himself away from all of us, all of his friends, all of his family members, fans, like addiction is a, is a brutal thing. And, and if you don't have any experience it with it, I guess it's really easy to sit back and blame all the people around the addict for not placating the addict and saying, Oh, we'll just tolerate all the disrespectful, you know, damaging behaviors, both economically and business and personally that this person is prioritizing. We'll just ignore all that because he's the leader of the band. Like, I don't know what world that works in, but this is not a new story. We've seen this story time and time again throughout history, and it's tragic and it's horrible. Um, but, you know, no one put a gun to his head and, and made him make these decisions that ultimately destroyed the infrastructure of 
Static X and then ultimately cost our friend his life. It's um it's terrible, but uh, it really is. I'm sorry I I took that that question from Tony, but for me as everybody in this thing's friend, it's really hard for me to see people pointing negative energy at the other guys that are just as responsible for all of the hard work and effort and energy that it took to build this band and to make Static X into, you know, Wisconsin Death Trip went platinum. And you're going to tell those other three guys they don't have a right to go out there and celebrate the, that accomplishment and celebrate the anniversary of it. And you don't think all three of those guys would love nothing more than for Wayne to just mystically appear and go, hey, guys, I got my shit together. Yeah. You don't think it's that, like, dude, I'm would, back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, awesome. you don't think that even even I would be so happy to go like, bro, like, here's your guitar, man. Like, go do what you do, because no one does what you do better than you. Um it's uh, it's just a really short sighted perspective to take. And, you know, if you feel pain over this, like, you know, maybe investigate that. But but putting it on the other dudes is just weak. No, it is. Yeah. Tony, do you, do you have I anything mean, to add to that? I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I what, I, what I find funny is, you know, there, there's the people out there that think they knew Wayne better than us. Or even better than than his own family. Yeah, you know, yeah. just because just because they saw or read an interview he did during arguably, you know, the worst time of his life. You know, when he was deep in the throes of addiction. You know, and angry. <laughs> but, you know, you know, yeah. I, like yeah. no no one's denying that there was a time when Wayne was angry at Tony because yeah. Tony and, would I mean, we were, just we, like hand yeah. over ownership of the band and go, yeah, call your solo band static X and keep driving it deeper and deeper into the ditch. Like, and, like yeah, I mean, we let we that both, happen. You're both angry at each other, you know? You know? Right. No, and friendships, I, 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 I get, that's why I say it's similar to, it is similar to, well, to, here, to the here, military. Dude, I'll, I'll give you, friendships I'll give you a up. better one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you a better one. Like four guys start a pizza shop together. And each guy helps to create the ingredients to make the recipe of this really great pizza that everybody in the neighborhood enjoys. It's called Static X Pizza. And every, all four guys helped make that awesome recipe. And then 10 years goes by, 12 years goes by, and like the, the lead chef at the pizza restaurant goes down a really crazy road and becomes an addict and starts selling stuff from the pizza shop out the back door and starts completely compromising the integrity of the pizza shop. And then unfortunately he passes away. Those other three guys that helped create that pizza shop and worked their ass off and came up with that recipe together. They're supposed to go, I guess there's no more pizza yeah. and not just for those three guys, but for their families and then for their friends. And then for all the people that love the pizza, like, Nope, no more for you either. This one person made some really bad decisions and we all have to live with that consequence. Like, I, I don't, I just don't see it that way. I, I, I just, I, I know bands are different because it's art, but the art is still there. No one's ever going to forget those amazing recipes. That's the whole point. That's why when Static X goes out on tour, they play those songs and, and all the glory goes to dude. Like I, I, I uh, I'm just not a subscriber to let's, Let's stop these other people, these other three original members and all the fans from being able to ever experience something again because the guy who stood in the middle for so many years flushed it down the toilet. Well, like I, I, I can't and, do yeah, it. I didn't realize it was it was you guys were getting hit that bad. I, I I'm a fan mm -hmm. and I I like yeah keep going man i mean i mean i i, I yeah, again, not so much a, now okay. but you know yeah right, not when, so much when we now. first announced this yeah when we first announced this we were getting a lot of well that what was that but, but it's funny because but now no, none of those people have anything to say yeah. because the band has succeeded yeah. at a level now to where it's arguably as big if not bigger than it's ever been and and those that small group of people that were complaining they were really rooting they were really just trying to go out there and see how many people they could get to like turn against it so that it could fail because what they really wanted was for it to fail well in retrospect now it's been you know six years since the band got back together and has played literally thousands of shows around the world at this point so it's like 
anybody that has a problem with it is probably, you know, embarrassed at this point to even speak up because there's too much momentum behind it. And uh, again, you have the family and you have the yeah. dudes, you know, closest friends from back in the day. Like, I'm sorry, but it's hard to really put a lot of emphasis on what some troll thinks because, you know, they have nothing better to do but go on Twitter and bitch about, you know, everything. Yeah. And and I mean, I think when people actually saw the final product of what you guys put out there on the first tour, which I was at the first tour, I think they got it after that. Um you know what I wanted to ask you about, actually, in terms of like the four original members, when when you see, you know, the current Static X lineup live, the majority of what you guys are playing is from the first two albums. And the thing that stands out to me is when you see Koichi live, like the amount of energy that guy has, you would think he's in his <laughs> 20s or at least early 30s. And so how instrumental was he in the band? Because he wrote. I mean, it was a part was part of the band when you guys wrote a lot of that material and the later material is not so much what you're celebrating when he was no longer with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, Ko Koichi, uh, his main contribution to to the band was uh, in his uh, ability to uh, write programming and uh, cool keyboard parts and stuff. And uh, it just added a, a whole nother element of uh you know electronics that really really brought in the 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 disco part of the evil disco formula you know so yeah he, he was he was very instrumental in, in yeah in helping us find a, that sound a, he's a phenomenal guitar player um yeah I was but, right. you know the, the more you know i've been now working with these guys close uh for years so i i feel like i know all the stories and I feel like I, you know, I understand it all as as intimate yeah, as certain. anyone can. <laughs> um, Koichi's a, a ridiculously talented guitarist, but that really wasn't his role because Wayne kind of had that locked down, and and Wayne was mainly the riff guy, for lack of better words. Like, yeah, you know, and we weren't doing we were doing, we were doing lead, lead guitar solos or anything. Right. So you know, this is he, so, he's a total shredder, but. We didn't really need yeah, that so, back then. So when they hired Koichi to come into the band to like fill out the sound, I I, I think they didn't really realize what they were getting when he kind of came in and started listening and went, oh, I, I hear this and I hear that. And it wasn't, I hear this new guitar part. It was, he went and grabbed his little quantizer and his keyboard and was like coming up with these really cool syncopated electro house parts that, you know, really like, Kenny likes to to use the term like Koichi was the polish. He came in and just like helped round out the evil disco sound. Um, and he he's awesome, man. Like I I'm I love I love working with that guy. He's just uh, a man of very few words, but yeah. when he when he speaks, when he like, says something, man, yeah, it, it it'll hit it's you. Prolific, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, prolific. and that's such, it'll, a, it'll that's either, such a big it'll either leave you in deep thought. It'll either leave you in deep thought. Or leave you rolling on the floor laughing. Right. <laughs> that, that's such that's a big true. part of the sound of Static X, though. You know, because there's always been that uh, debate, you know, that, and I know you guys are familiar with Eddie Trunk, but where they'll say bands are using too much electronics on stage. And for a band like Static X, though, that's Shut always been up. the sound. There's yeah. always been electronics that yeah, are part I, of the music. That, that was, I, 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 I never understood why anybody listened to that guy. I mean, he's not a musician. Uh, you know, he has no uh, experience performing live, so like, why, why listen to his opinion? I mean, he's, yeah, yeah. he's, he can have his opinion, great, but why anybody pays attention Dude, to and it? It's, I don't it's know. Two thousand twenty-four, man. Like, like I'm sorry, I know Foreigner was really cool <laughs> back in the seventies, and and, hey. and they had a six, and they had probably brought a sixteen-piece band up on stage with backing singers and freaking keyboardists and all these things to make that shit happen well it's 2024 you don't need all that shit anymore like how about how about this one eddie efficiency like how about efficiency for touring like how about we can't feed 26 people like when ronnie radke goes on tour and wants to play one of his hit songs that's got 52 keyboard lines and a full string section and all of this shit going on it's like yeah dude he's gonna hit a button and that button is going to do all the work because that's what technology does for you. Um, I mean, I, I get it if if a band is outright just like yeah. being a DJ, 
and yeah. there's there's no lead vocalist and there's you know I get it but I don't even, I don't feel like that's what that argument is based on I feel like that argument is based on some stupid purist mentality that's like so dated in its way of thinking and thinks that like I see four guys on stage so I only must hear what's coming out of those four people's bodies or the instruments the pieces of wood that they are holding like <laughs> oh, okay dude well, like, and that, and that's synth yeah. has been around since I said foreigner days that's how old I the fucking am man but right. come on man have you ever heard of flock of seagulls have you ever heard of new wave it's, but i no but i think any talks forever. more about the electronics and backing track and and all of that. that and i think more and more bands are using that and and you know static x has always incorporated but that yeah, but there's a big right. difference as as edsel said and i think that needs to be expressed of yeah flat out lip syncing live and or using yeah, accompanying dude, like, electronics. That's just like a the last instrument. time. The last yeah. time I saw Eddie, the, the last time I saw Eddie get all fucking up in arms on this, it was about falling in reverse. And it's yeah. like you're you're going after arguably like one of the most talented dudes of our generation. Like like if you think Sebastian Bach is like the dude of the eighties, <laughs> and you go, man, that guy sings his ass off. And you're right, Sebastian's yeah. so fucking yeah. talented. Yeah. Like. Like that's who Ronnie is of the younger generation. The dude's so fucking talented. He's like the only dangerous fucking rock star that we have out there right now that just does not give a fuck. He's uncancelable. He's dumb. Like he's everything you should be supporting in the rock and roll community right now. Instead of oh, let's tear him down because he's evolved his sound into having a very like the most modern that it can be i mean dude it's like a, an eminem song mixed with like a fucking lamb of god song with incredible melodic vocals on it like he's just cutting down all the boundaries blending everything together and it's done in a very technological way and the dude's not going to bring 35 people on tour so that he can like not have a laptop um could he play without his laptops? Yeah, I'm sure he could, but who the fuck would want to hear it? And and that's Ronnie's point too. He's like, dude, like no one wants to hear that. Like, and he, of course he makes fun of it. And he, you know, like, Ronnie's a real sensible guy, but I uh, I just don't understand those battles. Like, you're gonna you're gonna go after the dude that has literally been doing this now for 15 years, and he's he's con constantly. I love the name of the band too, Falling in Reverse, because he's constantly ascended. Like the, against all odds, that dude is now out there playing amphitheaters, like co-headlining with Papa Roach. Like, are you, are you, do you even acknowledge how big the band is, how many fucking streams, like how popular that dude has become and you're going to rip him apart because he, he's, he's not organic enough for you. And you're <laughs> like, come on, dude. Like you're just a fucking hater. You got man. I'm I'm just listening. I'm so no. I, on. I, 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 love this. I already I already hear. I already could see the images uh, of like blabbermouth, uh, static well, X right. members slam right. Eddie Trunk. But no, I I I understand well, where you guys. But that are wasn't because, my intention. My intention. But I just you you already know you Eddie, know how that Eddie, sucks yeah. Eddie yeah. Trunk has a way Eddie Trunk has a way bigger audience than I do. Yeah. Which is which is ironically kind of hilarious because he's not an artist, but people, I guess, respect his opinion. And that's cool. T to be honest, I don't even know Eddie. I know a lot of people that know Eddie. Um, I just don't see the point in attacking evolution, man. And and again, it'd be different if if you were starting a fight with an untalented person. But let me be very clear. Go find Ronnie Racky, bring an acoustic guitar and go like, hey, dude, sing me some songs. That guy will melt your face. He's an incredible fucking singer, an incredible songwriter. Like if you're going to go and you're going to bark up a tree of a guy that's like not being creditable or not being, you know, authentic, like you're barking up the wrong tree, man. Like this. Just, yeah. And just and, put and this that's, in. That's what I saw. I put was just this like, in per perspective, too. Yeah. I don't even know who Eddie Trunk is till Ian started bringing it. I know who Dope is, and I know who Static X is. So if I don't. Re I I want to listen to me. I don't give a shit what somebody says. Do you make good shit? Yeah, then that's what I want to listen to. So I at least as from a fan perspective, if that brings any uh, any happiness into your lives, who gives? I don't care who he. I I want to know. No, I mean my whole career, dude. I've been the guy who just like you, you know who gives a shit. Like yeah. you have to you yeah. have to be this yeah. or else. <laughs> 
yeah. you're not going to well, survive because yeah, everybody. This, this, this is the quintessential Edsel dope pose right here. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I told you. I told you guys. I was going to say, speaking of uh, of great singers, though, because you were just bringing this up before, I wanted to mention something from the last tour because, as I said, Edsel and and also your publicist Kevin graciously, you know, got me a laminate and I was in there, saw the whole tour, and you guys were awesome. Whether it was Mushroom Head, Dope, Static X, but. Uh, for Tony, especially, I have to say, just being genuine here, the standout for me more than anything, because they were kind of the unknown, was Fear Factory. And I am a giant Fear Factory fan. But uh, on the last interview, Edsel and I, before they announced who their singer would be, were kind of wondering what it was going to sound like, what it was going to look like. And as someone who has seen Fear Factory um, without Dino, with Dino, with Burton, I have to say, man, Milo blew me away. And I think this current lineup of Fear Factory, which I know they're touring and you won't be there because you're doing this currently, yeah. but mm -hmm. is is like the best I've ever seen Fear Factory live. And it's not any disrespect to Burton because he, him and Dino wrote some of the greatest metal songs I've ever heard in my right. life. But just coming from me, he was never the greatest live singer. And that's just my opinion. And Milo, I think, is replicating what they created in the studio at a far greater level i was i was so impressed by you guys yeah yeah the kid's good man and uh you know he's a he's a humble kid and you know he's appreciative of the opportunity he's he's gotten uh you know he knows the magnitude of it and he's taking it seriously and uh you know i just did like a five and a half week run with them at the end of the year in europe and uh yeah he nails it every night and uh towards the end of the tour he uh, during the last song, he sprained his ankle. <laughs> and, uh, he uh, he finished out the set. He toughed it out, man. And uh, you know he's a he's a he's a trooper. And uh, yeah, he's doing an awesome job. And the the know, funny thing I, is, I the, the last episode, I was the last episode that uh, Edsel and I were speaking about speculating of who the singer would be. I remember Edsel, you were suggesting at first. You were like, you have Tony Campos and Dinos on stage, who are legends in the scene. I, you were saying maybe this guy should kind of be in the background, have a strobe light on, and we'll focus on these two guys. And I would say Milo kind of took the opposite approach. He's up there front and center saying, this is the new generation of Fear Factory. And I have to say, it works. Because not only vocally does he sound incredible, but people have even said he looks a little bit like a young Burton Bell. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's definitely, you know, influenced by what Burton did and, uh, you know, how he would perform. And, um, I, I think he, he, uh, captures that vibe of what Burton did, you know, like, it's not like a carbon copy of what Burton was doing, you know, but, uh, but vocally, I think he, he nails everything, um, you know, hitting all the right notes and, uh, he's consistent every night. You know? Yeah. I think they got, uh, I think they got it right with him. I think he, uh, he has just enough of the, you know, coincidental sort of uh, height and weight and hair color. And um, <laughs> and then, he you know, he does the job really well. And uh, and a lot of that, too, um, you know, if I recall the conversation I was having with you about that was was the, the point I was trying to make is is I think that the singer a fear factory, the best route would be to take a very humble approach, like not try to make it all about you. And, um, and I believe that he's done that. Like maybe it hasn't been, you know, exactly the way you and I discussed it, but I, I still feel like from the audience, you feel humility from him. And that was really the point I was trying to get out that some new dude that no one knows walking out on stage and standing up on an ego box and putting his hands up in the air, like cheer for me that can be received very cheesy. Um, and I don't feel like he's uh, he's had much cheese factor. I feel like he's- No, not at all. I mean, I went in there, there thinking I, I was going to see a really good tribute to Fear Factory because let's face it, there's only one original member up there. But sure. I feel like I'm seeing Fear Factory. It doesn't feel like a tribute to me. Yeah, I mean, I think that your ears help with that a lot too, you know? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, Static X- has done a, a solid job for your ears as well 
but static was a bit more focused on the visual representation of it. And, and there is a difference too, between uh, a person who's alive and a person who's not. Um, I think there's a little bit more of a forgiveness to what's happening with fear factory because you're not up there memorializing someone. Um, so it's different. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, we did probably what 40 shows on that rise of the machine tour with fear factory. And no. I didn't see a bad show. I, you know, to me, it was exactly what I hoped it would be. It was sounded great had the big fear factory logo. It was Dino. It was Tony. And, uh, it was a dude that was up there earning it and, uh, and representing it. And I think the fans came out of that tour, super happy. So congratulations to Milo and Dino and of course, Tony. And, you know, it's, it's hard to bring a band back from the dead and, fear factory it's a different type of bringing something back from the dead than static x but a very similar thing where like everybody wrote it off and everybody told dino oh you'll never be anything again and you know like people love to celebrate failure and uh, i'm really happy for dino that he overcame it and he he put in the work and he sacrificed and you know it it isn't easy to go from being a very successful band with you know everyone around you is a professional that has been around the world and you've got this fan base that now is questioning you and you're going to come back and do it on your own as the only original member. And, you know, you're going to hire this kid from Italy that no one's ever heard of before. And, and you take all those steps and you get in a rehearsal room and you slug it out and you learn the songs and you pay attention to the details. And then you go out there and you lay it on the world and it fucking works Dude, you deserve to be like respected for that. You deserve all the credit in the world for for uh putting your 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 backpack on and going to work every day, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. A lot of people think yeah, rock and roll isn't work, but like yeah. that's, a, that's a lot I, of work. Yeah, and especially for that guy, considering all the, the hell you know he went through, you know, the previous four five years, you know, dealing with personal dramas uh lawsuits bankruptcies and you know, yeah it's just the yeah for, for him to, to go through all that and to persevere yeah and man. to be where he's at now you know yeah so it, in really a cool lot guy. of ways it reminds me of the static x story and i i remember like not taking any credit that's not my intention here but like i feel like i had a lot of good talks with dino early on that you were just like the encouragement, man, just like, just one step at a time, dude, like you got this, you, this is your passion. It's like anything. It's, it's one day at a time. It's, 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 uh, it's being able to keep your eye on a marathon minded mindset. And I like to use the example of like the analogy of if you want to climb a hundred stories, you don't do it by paying attention and agonizing over every step that you take. You put the backpack on and you go, I'm just going to put my head down and I'm just going to start climbing steps. And before you know it, you're going to look backwards and you go, dude, I'm on the fifth floor already. It's like, all right, well, all you got to do that is 20 more times and you go up the hundred floors. And that's just a, a marathon minded mentality. And, and I think that Static X obviously had that for the rebuild and Dino obviously had that too. And you know, it is kind of cool. And maybe Tony Campos is the, is the, uh, the glue that holds both of them together, you know, who knows, but, um, <laughs> it is pretty cool because those, you know, you wouldn't expect that, you know, the chances, the, the likelihood that both of those bands came through in the last, you know, 24 months and came from, arguably a position of you know it's kind of over no one really is paying a lot of attention to rebuilding and and breathing health back into those brands and those entities um that's a pretty cool testament like that that's defying odds in my opinion like both bands have defied the odds because no one was clamoring and lining up for a static X reunion. No one was going on blabbermouth every day and going, when's static X going to get back together without Wayne? <laughs> like it wasn't happening. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying this interview. 
Uh, there is definitely a military connection with the bands Dope and Static X. Uh, you'll hear Edsel uh, further on in the interview talk about guys in the military learning their weapons while listening to Dope, uh, which is a pretty cool story. Uh, and if you're shooting out there, whether you're in the military or you're a hunter, shooter, just someone at the range, you got to shoot with Fort Scott Munitions. They are a manufacturer of multi-federal patented solid copper and brass CNC spun ammunition that is designed to tumble upon impact in soft tissue, leaving devastating wound channels for faster bleed out and quicker incapacitation. This ammunition was originally developed to innovate and improve on the standard of military grade ammunition design. It was found that not only did the TUI ammunition outperform competitors in the self-defense industry, but it quickly became apparent that it would be a top contender for hunters alike. With the ammunition being CNC spun, the tolerances are some of the tightest on the market, ensuring that you receive the same results with each pull of the trigger. Uh, you are a guy who spends more time on the range than probably anyone I know, quite <laughs> honestly, and this is all that you shoot. And it's it's... To me, it is still the best home defense, best hunting ammunition on the market. And guys, they have so many different grains out there, so many different calibers. They're always developing new grains and new calibers. So check them out. Get on their website. You can see the gel tests that they do. A lot of guys, you know what that is. If you're a shooter, they'll have those on the YouTube on their YouTube page. They'll have actual hunting demos that they're out there on, and you can see the effects that they have on, on certain 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 animals when they're out there hunting certain species so guys don't take my word for it just get on their youtube page you can they have all the proof you need on there to see how how effective their ammunition is and then all their other gear that they have at their shop their t-shirts and and their their you know they have targets galore over there they have all sorts of equipment and they give us a dang good discount for it so yeah fort scott munitions and they're just good people the yes, craft searchers yeah. I mean, who likes hunting more than Gage over there? I Just know. the name Gage. Gage. You know Gage. he's a hunter. You know but... he's named Gage because of because of that. Come on, we're in the Midwest. He's named Gage because of probably twelve. Ga you know, I know that's why he's, he won't admit that. But I'm like, yeah, dude, you are so redneck. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's what's got me issues, man. Yeah. So check them out. And as Chris said, they do offer a great discount to our listeners and they've been with us since the beginning. So yeah. if you're looking to shoot with something, please support us and support them. Uh, use the exclusive uh, promo code battle line. When you go to FSM.com for 15% off your order, that's FSM.com promo code battle line. Fort Scott Munitions is a proud supporter of Chris Peranto battle line tactical and the battle line podcast. And with that, let's get right back to Edsel dope and Tony Cantlos. You know, let me say this in the most respectful way that I can. I don't have, I'm not, I'm not here to share my opinion of what Pantera is doing, even though I, I think it's awesome. I but, do too. And I saw them open for Metallica and incredible. Ridiculous, right? Yeah. But, but my point is that that's kind of a layup. Like, how, like Pantera, they were probably the last ones to agree but I guarantee you their booking agent is calling them and going, hey, guys, just want you to know there's a $10 million offer for you guys to play XYZ Festival. Right. So like, that's not a very difficult thing to overcome. The infrastructure of how do you rebuild Pantera? Well, you called the two of the most famous guys in the fucking genre. You call Charlie from Anthrax and you call Zach from Black Label. Okay, like respectfully, that's not that's not doesn't that's not a big stretch for that to be <laughs> successful um you know static x and fear factory a bit different like you know people weren't clamoring for these bands to get back together promoters were not calling with profitable offers like these bands had to go back in the mud and like really really dig it out and earn it and uh and it's and it's a testament to the hard work and, of course, to the fan bases that missed these bands. Um, and I'm super happy and proud of of both of them as as my friends. You know, I, for me, ironically, I met both of those bands on the same day. Like the first right. tour that we did with Fear Factory was yeah. Fear Factory, Static X and Dope. And they were all so gracious to us and so nice to us. So for me to see them go through the trials and tribulations that both bands have gone through. And now in 2024 to really unquestionably be healthy again and be out there entertaining and drawing large crowds. Like it's fucking awesome, man. And anybody that hates on that is just, uh, they got a lot of time on their hands and devoted to just 
hating shit. And, you know, yeah. I, I, I like that. Life. I like seeing. I like seeing the comments. You know, like you know, uh, someone will hate on, on the band, and then you'll get a quick response. Well, cool. We'll go go cry in the in the corner about it. You know, it's like you know. Yeah, the latest, the latest one that I've seen Static X adopt that I love is like, oh, no Static X, no, you know, no Wayne Static, no Static X, or whatever their their comment is, and it's just walk on home, boy. Like, <laughs> what are you gonna say at this point? The band is like playing to to as big a crowds as they've ever played. They've more production. They've put so much into the show for it to be entertaining, and all the while making a very valiant attempt to not really move on from Wayne, to make sure that his spirit and his energy is in there, and uh, and his family is is part of it. It's just like, man, if if you don't get it, uh, you're never gonna get it, and uh, too bad for you. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like every you. time you guys play yeah. cold every night, uh, you know, you, you memorialize them. What were you saying, Tonto? No, well, I say when I, with me as a fan, and I'm not a negative Nelly fan, nothing like, no, I was like, man, damn it. And I hope they keep making more music. A lot of guys like, I didn't know if you guys were going to come back. I mean, it's like, how do you, how do you replace that? And, you know, with zero and, and you've, you've done it, you've, you've, you're fucking killing it. But how do you have that mindset of, okay, what do we, is it, what do we do now? Or is it, okay, we got to fucking figure this shit out. Let's not. Yeah. Down. I mean, it's it, it wasn't easy to figure it out. Let me tell you. Yeah, but, uh, well, I mean, I, it is because when somebody dies, and I get it, I believe me, I get it. Yeah. And there are times where, 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 yeah, where I had to continue to press on right then and there because of the job, what we were doing. But it's not easy to do. And when you have time to sit there and think about it, it's even harder. So, what was the mind? Was it like, all right, fuck, damn, what are we going to do? All right, we're going to, we're going to do this and we're going to, we're going to continue. And we'll just figure it out as we go. Or well, I, I don't, so I don't part think that too. that was really the mindset for, for Static X, though. It wasn't like our guy, because you have to understand when Wayne passed away, the band was disbanded already. Sure, sure. So yeah, it yeah, wasn't, yeah, yeah. It wasn't sure. like they were in the midst of all yeah. this momentum and Wayne passed away and they had to figure out how to continue. It was actually. Yeah, it wasn't like that. It was. Yeah, it wasn't like Cliff Burton uh, dying in the middle of the tour. Right. You know? I, I got. It. it. It was really more of of the twentieth anniversary of Wisconsin Death Trip was coming up, and you had you know, and which also was the twentieth anniversary of Dopes, Felons, and Revolutionaries. Right. So you had both bands who had a, a really rich history together, sort of just talking about like, man, we got this 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 anniversary that's so important to all of us coming up, and that led from the 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 internal conversations of everybody wanting to go out and celebrate that incredible yeah. anniversary and accomplishment to Tony actually going well why don't we just make it a memorial and once that became like the mission it all made a lot more sense and became really clear and it made it really obvious yeah. to everybody so did, did like a it. light bulb go off like holy shit we've had something special here that we didn't even realize and ding 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 now we've wow let's we we do have something here let's I, I don't i don't think it was so much realizing that there was something here that no one expected it was more there was a there was a lighthouse to point to which was gotcha. the 20th focus. anniversary it yeah. was like okay, yeah now we yeah. have a focal mm -hmm. point yeah and then and yeah. then it was working backwards of how do we do this and again, because it became a memorial tour, even more emphasis was being put in that blank part of the stage for Static X and going, well, how how are we going to fill how, that blank yeah. spot? How and, do we how do we represent Wayne in a cool way without right. being, hey, here's Static X with their new singer, you know? That's yeah, and, and it's so funny because a lot of the people that that wanted to hate on it, they were like, well, why doesn't this guy just take this stupid mask off and be himself? It's like, isn't that the opposite of what you want yeah. the band to right. do? Like, you want the band to not continue without Wayne, and but you want them to continue without Wayne with a new face. Like, yeah. to me, that is the opposite of keeping Wayne in the mix. So I think the, the shortest road and the shortest way for people to sort of get where the band and the creative energy was with it was um, if you like Iron Maiden, you know that Iron Maiden has a lead singer named Bruce Dickinson. And then they also have this really cool character that's built into their branding. Called, Eddie, I was going to say what you got Eddie. on stage yeah. is and, like and, Eddie. And for Static yeah. X, mm -hmm. by default, because of the marketing and the way the band was, was portrayed to the masses, 
Wayne was Bruce Dickinson, but over time, the branding and the record label and the marketing, he also became Eddie. Yeah. So for Static X, we kind of went like, well, if Wayne's not here, maybe we can figure out a way for Eddie to become the singer of the band. And and I think if you really look at it through that filter, you can on your own start to see like how it made sense to to build the character out the way that the band did and to not put another face on it or to not put another, you know, hey, Jeff Johnson is now the yeah. singer of Static X. Like, <laughs> yeah, let's it's name worked. that character well, it, that it, ever it, had a name. And it, 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 it did. And when I saw the, it was the first video of Terminator, Oscillator. That was at the first video i that's i didn't i saw wayne that's what i saw I, I, when i saw the zero up i'm like shit that's i th i thought it was i was one of those crazy guys that believes elvis is still alive you know like holy shit maybe this is all a big spoof <laughs> like, it, it, yeah right but, but yeah. It, it, it did it was just it to me it was man this is fucking i, I mean I, I it's like you didn't skip a beat man it's like man, yeah and, and you guys right have evolved there. the character more and more how like on the last tour you know you've lasers being shot out of the eyes <laughs> and just so much cool visual stuff yeah, um yeah, yeah. i wanted to switch gears a little bit because i thought this was kind of interesting i was racked my brain with the stuff we spoke about in the last interview Edsel and you were very candid in the last interview where you said you know that you love doing what you do playing these shows but you were honest with me where you said I don't want to be doing this when I'm 60 and you were talking about your stepson and, and your other kid That's and awesome. you were like you know I want I wish there was a way that for them to take over this business at some point but the funny thing about that is when we spoke was when you, right when you uh, guys got off the Rob Zombie tour and then Static X and Dope did the tour with Fear Factory, the Rise of the Machine tour with Fear Factory and Mushroom Head, and you know which we were just speaking of. And now you're doing yet another leg of this going. tour with Seven Dust. And I feel like both you guys are touring as much as you did in the late '90s. Like it doesn't seem like it's going to slow down at any point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, we're definitely not touring like we all did in the 90s, because back then there was like there was no break. It was like nine months straight, like tour to tour to tour to tour to tour. Yeah. Um, I mean, that first uh, those first two years, uh, 99, 2000, like we were home maybe a total of a month. You know, like if between tours, a day or two. And then, all right, go to the next one, go to the next one. And then towards the end of that second year management told us you know you guys can say no and we're like really we can say no like now you tell us <laughs> right <laughs> but yeah. you know touring all that all, all doing all those tours man is what helped bring the band to as many people as possible and, you know that's why we succeeded like it did. and we you know we didn't have the big internet you had to man the 90s and yeah that's what we did. We went to the little the the Silk Auditorium, or we went to some barn if we're living out in in the sticks, and we we'd see you guys play. That's how we that's how we got to see it. Yeah. But but that being said, MTV actually did play music videos at that time too. Yeah, so back then. Yeah. We, we did everyone. We if they were okay to get on, we'd we'd right. see. It. But yeah, totally different animal. I think the point that I was trying to make to you um, in that last conversation, though, and and. I'll 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 parlay off the pizza shop uh, example I was given is which you like, did last time. You're saying yeah that you you <laughs> could, you could uh, that, that pizza shop could go pizza. on to your children. Yeah, you were saying that to me. Yeah, like I mean that's that's the one thing they never tell you. Like there was a million reason that my parents or other people would tell me not to get into the music business, but as I've gotten older, the one that I wish somebody would have told me was that like. The American dream is ultimately to, you know, work hard, build a business, and then at some point either sell said business and retire or pass business on to your kids. You can't do that with a band. And that's something that like, you know, is really hard for people to kind of understand. Again, like you've you've built this pizza shop and you've got this 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 client list of customers that love to come and enjoy your pizza. And, but if you're not in the kitchen making the pizza, there is no pizza. Like that's, that's the part of it that, you know, I guess you can further understand why, you know, if I had the money, the Rolling Stones do, I don't know that I'd still be out there playing, start me up at 75 years old. But at the same time, I respect the, why they're doing it because like, this is what they do and they're not ready to retire. And the Rolling Stones 
are worth yeah. arguably yeah. nothing without those guys up there giving you the rolling stones. Like, you know, right. it, uh, it is, it is something that a lot of people probably take for granted that like you work, you know, how does a guy in a band retire? Like you have to figure out how to save your money and invest your money. And otherwise you will be doing this shit when you're 65. Yeah. Years old. And again, I, I gotta, I gotta ask a follow up to that though, because there is a band finding a way to do this after they die. And actually I'll pick up the book right here. I know you guys are Kiss fans. So yeah. Um, yeah, what do you think again, about the idea but, of this again, coming back dude, as like, Avatar? Like, but it's such a bad example because there's it's such a ridiculously overblown bank account. Like, oh, of course. Like, I, do... I get it. Dope will never come back as Avatar. But I'm wondering what you think of it. Do you think it's because there's been so many opinions online about they played their final show and, P and uh, Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons have always been open that they're like, when we're done, we want Kiss to continue as an entity. But I think, I think people I, thought it'd be people, you know, filling in those shoes and no, God. they're going to do it as Avatar. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, who who knows? Who it's knows? Like, Let, let's see. It's let's like see virtual Menudo. <laughs> yeah, let's let's see if it works. I mean, I, I think one of the reasons that I am a little bit. Um, what's the word? Skeptical of whether or not it can work is is because Kiss was was a weird band in the sense that they transcended age groups partially because of the live show like you could bring a 13 year old to a kiss show and because it's so over the top and so outlandish and this and the and the makeup and the sparks and the fire like it's so beyond like sensory it's a, overload it's a spectacle yeah, yeah. yeah that's what it is it's the spectacle. a 13 year old kid may not identify with the music at all but but he but the sensory overload of the show allows him to go like wow that was a really cool experience my 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 apprehension with thinking that the avatars can work into the future is i'm not sure that the music that accompanies those avatars can speak to a younger yeah. generation that's yeah. where i feel mm -hmm. like it's a bit like that's where it's tough because any you know you go find a 16 year old kid who's into whatever they're into and, you know, just play them a kiss song. And they're probably going to be like, eh. I mean, it's not the Beatles, man. Like you can play the Beatles for young people and the Beatles are like timeless Kiss is butt rock. It's kind of cheesy lyrics. It's kind of <laughs> like, and I love it, but I grew up in the seventies. So I'm just, I'm not sure that the avatars are going to be able to bridge them to a whole new demographic of fans because i think the music is a bit limiting as far as well, oh, its reach do you well sometimes i think it might have the opposite effect though because these kids now i don't maybe they, they, maybe they, they didn't maybe grow the up where, where guys were, were playing you guys still play i still yeah. watch the bands that play instruments where you see a lot maybe, of maybe the spectacle out of the avatars themselves is, is enough it, to bring in the generation i with mean these damn, damn, yeah with these damn I, things I, again i just i think that work? i think young people would want to see those crazy yeah, high I mean. high definition avatars wrapped in a sound that more represents that crazy that, gotcha. yeah, avatar you know gotcha. what i mean like yep, and the yep. music sounds like it came from the 70s but the avatars look like they're doesn't work crazy yep. modern thing yeah, yeah. and, I, and I, i'll tell you point. on a much smaller level that is one of the unexpected things that we've seen with static x in the evolution of the zero character to what it is now um you see you know fans bringing their kids or their nieces or nephews to the shows and maybe again they get caught up in the spectacle and the lights and and all that shit but um but they're seeing old dudes on stage but the the mask and zero and the cyborg and how that's evolved you see younger people responding to that differently than they would be responding to a 55 year old man up there singing push it which is really and cool. as i said let's be honest i, I don't know if it's an yeah. asian thing but koichi doesn't look like he's in his fifth agreed <laughs> oh, yeah, agreed, we, right? agreed so yeah. so that's that's been really cool and, and again i think kiss gets away with that too like you don't really <laughs> see the age of those guys because of the makeup and but again i think but sonically i think that you know it's it, they've never they've they've you know people fell in love with kiss because of what it is it's uh, 
I don't think any of us can say we've heard a modern sounding Kiss song that's going to attract a, a 16 year old kid that's into fucking, you know, Lamb of God or whoever the, you know, kids. I mean, that Lamb of God the forever now, too. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I don't even know who would. You could, there's nobody sleep token to seems guys. to be the big yeah there you go there's, 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 there's a great there's, example yeah. you know? and, and i'm over 50 so i'm still a grouchy fuck i i won't get sure. out of here I, i'm like no i'm not listening to that shit <laughs> no I, but at the it, end of the day you know i think it's cool <laughs> that kiss is trying to push into the into the digital space and i think that you know as they tweak those avatars they're going to get cooler and cooler and and it you know there's going to be something there um it's just i don't see it speaking to new generations of young people sonically but visually do maybe they just turn them into comic book characters and their 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 storylines are as important as the music i could see that mm -hmm. you know yeah, video well, games and and that kind of shit you know we'll see what happens because it's like they're waiting till 2027 to uh unveil it um, i, I you don't know think they're waiting till 2027 to unveil it they have like it's gonna take three years of 40 hour work weeks for a team of 10 people to build that show into what ABBA has built. Like, have you seen yeah. the ABBA show? I've heard of, I've heard about it and mm -hmm. how crazy it is and that they built an arena just for that. So but that's yeah. what kiss is going to try to do. At least that's what it appears. And it's going to take mm -hmm. them three years behind the scenes to build that. And I think that just teasing the avatars was just their way of saying, this is what's coming. Don't judge us on this end product. Give us three years to build this and then come see a ridiculous spectacle live event. And I think that will be great, just like it's been great for ABBA. Like, I think if you are able to physically go to that building and witness the the KISS experience as avatars, it probably will be fucking awesome. But watching the KISS avatars on your laptop, I don't know how engaging that's gonna I, be i agree with that right. i think and i actually think the three-year four-year buffer gives people some time to all right we just saw the final tour we'll be able to do be a part of this new thing um you know what i wanted to ask you about too though edsel and i think chris could probably relate to this actually is you know because chris has a younger kid at an older older age i guess you could say as do you but before we started recording, Chris was saying um, how you have the coolest name, Edsel Dope, and you made a joke where you were like, it doesn't really go well with uh, when you're sending your kid to preschool. Yeah. And so I was wondering, man, how do you transition from this guy who, you know, plays rock shows? And and let's be honest, like you look at the, the dope videos, it is all sex, drugs, rock and roll. And you are now like the father of a young kid and stepfather to your, as you said, you're not, you know, married, but for all intents and purposes, other than the yeah. government you are you you kind of have transitioned to like a very different person at Dope 2024 than what a lot of people grew up with you as i mean i think it's just marketing and perception i think that um you know doing things like this give people a better uh a better look behind the the bullshit to what's truly there like Tony's known me 25 years. Like I'm no different than I was except for maturity wise. Like sure. 25 years ago, yeah. I was chasing girls around and acting like a fool. But if you sat down with me and, and talked music or talked business, you got the same guy. Um, I've always been, um, you know, I'm trying to think of how to put this. Um, I've always put work first. I've always been yeah. responsible. I've, I may have been portrayed in the media, as like the sex, drugs, and rock and roll guy, because that's what a lot of the messaging behind the music was. Um, but I've never been a drug addict. I'm, it's yeah. not in my disposition to be addicted. Like I'm a workaholic. Like, uh, yeah, I, you're addicted to work. That's what it, yeah. You're like I, I, I wake up and um, and and my priorities are the most important to me. So being a person that would get caught up in drugs or, or, or caught up in alcohol to a degree where it would affect my ability to prioritize getting the job done, that just would never happen. So, um, so I don't know, but I, but do I think that people, you know, have a misconception of who Edsel Dope is? Sure. But again, that's portrayed by music videos and the media, and immature interviews and um so yeah uh, but but there's not really a like you said how do i differentiate between that like i i hate to say it um but it's it's really just 
when you turn the camera on and it's not something like this and it's like we're making a music video and there's a theme to it or whatever like it's just uh just uh, emphasizing those parts of my personality for that purpose of exploiting them but um you know i don't i don't live that at 40 now i'm almost 50 years old like i just i would be such a buffoon to walk around thinking i was that guy plus you know there's a lot of ego built into that young character that i got rid of really quick like i came to realize at a pretty early age i think that ego is just a sign of insecurity um people that push their chest out and talk a big talk is generally because they're they're deep down trying to prove something and trying to get affirmation once you've gotten that and it's not really what you're seeking anymore um i don't know i have no use for ego Tony, forgive me. I don't know if you're a father, and I, buddy, I don't know. Yeah, that's what he just said. He's the father yeah, of a young kid. And oh, me? No, 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 Tony. Oh, Tony. Oh, okay. Tony. Yeah. yeah. He dodged that. No. Bullet. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're, you're serious? Are nah. you ser hey. serious? <laughs> <laughs> See? Nope. See, I, I, I got dogs. That's enough. Yeah. Yeah, I, I heard I, the dogs I, in the background. I, 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 how yeah. have you, do you dodged that over all these? Man, that's a. That, well, uh, I, I said, be, being a father, and I get the father, the fatherhood. Uh, walking in the door and having to, and turning the father and being the father is, is that something though? And so you, you've, you've, you've got to like take a deep breath before you walk. And I, you kind of answered it already just because of age and maturity, but where you step to the front door of the home and you have to take a deep breath and Hey, I'm, I'm a father. Yeah. I'm going to get humbled when I come in the house. This is what I need. I, I need to, I need to turn this bullshit off that you may have been, going through you know for five six hours doing a filming where and, and it, i get it it, it gets no, in your head no it, it really the like for lack of better words the character of yeah. edsel dope like no I, like i literally can come off stage and like i'm i'm immediate like I'm, the minute that that mic hits the floor and even like before That's i awesome. go on stage i'm not a guy that like sits side stage and gets, gets all amped up like I'm literally like texting something and it's like, oh shit, that's the intro. And I got to throw my phone and go like, yeah. it's more the other way around. Like I have to put on the the yeah. act to go out on stage. And, and But I don't really even do that much. It's not really in my disposition anymore. Like I feel like Edsel Dope is really um, on stage. He's really become friends with all those people. So it's, it's, I actually enjoy my time on stage between songs more than I enjoy the songs themselves. Cause I just like talking to the crowd and connecting with them on that level. Um, but, uh, the, the biggest challenge with being a dad is not letting the stress yeah. of work. It's not being a character or acting like an immature asshole. That's easy. It's the stress. It's like, man, I'm, trying to manage, you know, a handful of businesses and I wake up to 60 emails and you're in the middle of trying to text something that's important. And your kid is like pulling at your leg about, yeah. you know, a Lego that they want you to put together. And that's where you have to take the deep breath and go like, this Lego means everything to her, this text message, she doesn't understand. So like, you have to like, just try to be a, you know, a more, uh, just patient person. Be a patient father. That's just being yeah. a pa patient father. I, I, That's it. I completely understand that. Now, I, I, guys, I, I, I said I just wanted to sit and listen and throw a couple things in because I, yeah, I, I just love the story and talking to you guys. Just it, it still, it just brings me back. It brings me back to whether whether you like it or not. It brings me back to the global on terror. It brings me back to when I was in Iraq. It brings me no, back, dude. To I, I get it. I'm so grateful for you guys, and it's part of my story, especially with dope and die, motherfucker, die. That I never anticipated. <laughs> like I never like if I would have written the script for for it, uh, it has it has turned into such an important part of my story and connection with an entire yeah group of people Everybody. like yeah. dude i can't tell you i can be in in the caribbean dude on vacation and standing in line and somebody will catch my knuckles or or somehow i don't know just like somehow be in a bar having a drink yeah. and, and again anywhere in the world and if there's a soldier 
that's of similar age and they hear the word dope or, yeah. or die, motherfucker die. It's like immediately like we're buddies and they, and it's weird too, because like I, I did nothing. I wrote a fucking song and, but somehow I have this connectivity and this, this brotherhood with, especially Marines, man. <laughs> like, I can't tell you how many Marines have come to me and been like, Big bro, age. I learned how to shoot a machine gun to die, motherfucker, die. They die, play, motherfucker, yeah. die. Because if you hold it any longer, you burn it out. It's and, it's the three. It's a three to five three to five second burst, man. Yeah, and dude. Say, Bye, dude. Fucking, let it go. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I just I never. And then, man, like I, you know, there was a whole thing where they talked about how they they were using certain bands' music to interrogate Iraqi POWs that, 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 that they I, used. And it's like, but it's like, for me, like you're using my voice and my, like, it's, <laughs> it's just something I never, ever in anticipated or thought was going to be part of the journey. And, and, and I'm, and also die motherfucker die was, was this weird thing for us. It was part of why the band got released from Epic records. Like the world trade center fell. We were pushing oh, die motherfucker die we were on this trajectory to be this very commercially yeah. viable band with that spin me round song yeah. world trade center fell. We're on Sony music. We're pushing die motherfucker die. And they're like, yeah, we're not about that life. Like good yeah. luck. Guys. Well, I didn't know so that. that it was, a, it was, it was an incredibly, uh, at that time you would have looked at it. Like it was the worst thing I ever did. The biggest mistake of my life. But then in retrospect, when I became an independent artist, that song and that connectivity to those soldiers was something that I just, it took on a whole life of its own and was a big part of me having that very successful independent career. Gotcha. Um, I just, it's just something you never could have planned for. It was a, a turn in the road for dope. And uh, it's something that I'm, I'm very grateful for. Didn't plan it. Um, but I do, man, I have such a, a, a strange and unique and almost like just unbreakable bond with soldiers that went to Iraq during that time and, and risked their lives and lost their buddies. And somehow I'm intertwined in it, dude. Like but somehow it, I was it, there it, with them, but you, I wasn't. You do. The music and I've told you know, we had Corley Taylor on from Slipknot and we, I used to listen to Slipknot too. And I was like, on and, 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 you know, and then, um, who was, who was, the, there's another band. I'm just Johnny trying to blank. Some Carnifex. I don't know. Had, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm just song. trying to, but, but it, it, it keeps us in touch when we're over there. Yeah. It reminds us it, it, whether it's hard, soft, whatever, it reminds us of home. Of course. And so we go through something bad. We hear it. It's like okay no i'm still i still got a piece of me at home i still got a piece of you know and, and not being the overly patriot because i i am patriotic of course but not being there over ah, i'm remembering america it's home I'm remembering and it's man. also and like you know? and from what i understand it's like survival too survival, it is like, it's well, you're getting you're with your buddies and you're all getting pumped up to do something that yes. most people can't fathom doing and you're looking for that extra like bit of like just inspiration for this incredible courage that you're going to have to go out there and display. And like, that's why I mean, I can't tell you how many dudes have given me hugs and been like, thank you, bro. You were with me. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> like I did nothing, man. Like I can't imagine, you know, it's, it's fucking heavy duty. Um, it, it's, give me, it's give incredible. me, give me thirty seconds. I gotta, I gotta run outside and and give something to a yeah, dude. Do your thing, because actually, I have a up. question for Tony anyway. If that's cool, and and I got, <laughs> and I got, I got, I got my own story for Tony and Static X. Perfect. About, well, right? so if so, I can just so, ask so for that first... reminded me when I was in Yemen. I, and I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll for, do it. So the, the first man. thing I was going to ask Yemen. though for Tony related to that actually is yeah we I spoke about a lot of this with Edsel last uh, time he was on. Um, last week on the show we had a Blackwater contractor on. Um, Nick, who was actually buddy. imprisoned Nick. long story but the last um and and pardoned but the last question that chris asked on the show was he was like what were you guys listening to before <laughs> you went out on missions and he said himself static x slipknot so i'm sure you have plenty of stories yourself of guys who were out on missions and getting pumped up to static x because i feel like push it and cold and all those songs. i mean yeah, and, and, the, and, that's and, what i was doing well, the gym now, as a civilian answer that because the destroyer was something that i got Oh man, I'd still I'd still watch that video and now, anyway, go answer that question first. <laughs> I got something with it. I got something with it. 
Yeah, Sorry. no, I mean, like, like, like Ethel, you know, I, I, I've had the privilege of, uh, you know, running into, uh, you know, lots of service men and women out there, you know, not just, you know, in country, but overseas in Europe or in Japan, uh, yeah. you know, and uh, it, it's, it's an honor every time, you know, um, you know, I, I had a, a buddy of mine that I went to junior high school with ended up uh uh being in the army and got deployed over in iraq and uh you know he was a he was a, a helicopter mechanic That's and you know he, and he came over to my house one day you know years later i hadn't seen him in like a you know decades and, and he came over to my house and we we're just talking about you know his experiences over there and he's telling me how you know yeah you know it, it, it was cool you know so like you know, helicopters are kind of like cars just like flipped inverted you know and uh you know so you know i'm out there you know working on on on, on the you know helicopter engine and every once in a while i hear an explosion I'm like oh, all right and you know yeah. uh, no big deal but then when the when the siren goes off you're like oh shit we gotta take shelter all right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> you just get you know, I'm like I'm like i can't even imagine I'm like bomb goes off like, i'm running for cover you know Brother, you, it's, honestly, it's crazy we, we would get so tired of it I, i'll be i was like I get, and that's what it was when you guys are just talking, you know, we're going on our, doing our, our, our doing our, uh, our events. We're going out, we're singing, we're going out on our tours and guys may show up active shooters, but we still got to do our jobs. It's that same mindset with the sirens. It gets to the point where you're like, fuck it. If it hits me, it hits me. So I'm going to sit here and keep, and I just put my headphones back in and keep, <laughs> it, but what I was getting there, there, it, it's a funny story. I know we're getting that. This is lighthearted and we're getting towards the end here anyway. But yeah, the destroyer, when I was in Yemen, I worked in Sanaa after Libya. I, and yeah, I, 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 I'm a good, I'm a good boy. I'm a good husband when I'm overseas. I'm, a, but man, yeah, you get those. So I got to watch videos and there's not a lot of, so destroyer was the video that would just get my jib going, brother. I'd watch it like, <laughs> man, those roller girls look hot. <laughs> I just yeah. get, how it made me just, it, it just well said, I get in the morning and you know, I'd, I'd run a little bit and then run the treadmill and I get my iPad out and I had destroyer and I just would watch that. Mm -hmm. And I'd honestly, I'd watch Lizzie Hale and, and I'd watch Hell Hellstorm, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I can't. I just Pretty can't. Wait. I I can't wait to get back home because I got blue <laughs> blue balls. <at> me. <laughs> but I'll tell you, that destroy it got me through a whole freaking deployment one time. Just just to just so I could stay faithful to to my wife watching it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but, <laughs> but that's that's the thing. That's the thing that I don't think musicians understood with us. It, the music, it just it hits home more than just the music. Getting the amped up. Before you're going out, like fuck yeah, okay, let's get going. Because you'd think to yourself, this may be the day. No, I can't think about that. Let's just get amped up, and then yeah. it, it keeps us all so faithful. Even though, hey, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Well, I'd rather watch it on here and get a little <laughs> get a little chub than go out and do things I shouldn't do. And then right. also, then also, just just you know, and I know you're on on tour with Seven Dust. Angel Sun is something that we still I still listen to and. Oh, yeah. something that, that brings you down and also brings you mm. i amped but it also now as i'm older now we listen to it as a group it reminds us of the guys that we've lost so of course. yeah the, the connection mm. with the music and the military especially the special ops community what would you know i was a ranger one time and then the seals that worked with us it's it's just huge it's it's so cathartic and that's why i love that you guys are going out and doing doing more static X with zero because i know that's cathartic for you guys I yeah know that, absolutely you know. yeah especially so, when we first when we first, uh, you know, started touring this, uh, it, that, that first show we did in Phoenix, you know, uh, we got off the stage, you know, uh, me, uh, Kenny and Koichi we were in the dressing room and we were just like, oh man, that was so awesome. And then, and then immediately and I was just like, fuck, we should be here, you know? And, you know, that's when, and like that, the really reality. hit home right yeah, the, the reality that wayne wasn't yeah. here like fuck you know you should be here <laughs> but you know it was such an awesome moment but it was just like fuck you know that's yeah. why you, you guys tie in with with the military and with guys like us especially us old guys that fought in those those early early after 9 11 it, there is a there is a special bond you guys will always have i don't know either i've never made it but i know if we i saw i give you all a big fucking hug and man and and be like thanks because it is that did you get a job. chub 
I I might get a little chub. It depends. It depends. It depends how close you let me grab you. I mean, if you let me go low. You let me what, come if sit, or, what if I started? What if I started? What if I started? We were ro- destroyer to you. This tr- yeah. Oh, dude, or, you, or, you, you or if we were th- roller skates, you know. You, exactly, dude. You get a. I get a three inch stiffy, dude. That three. I think it's about me. I maybe I'll get maybe I'll get a half inch. Get a three and a half inch. I ain't ashamed. I got her. She loves Break me. Break it down like a steam hammer. <laughs> <Yeah, hammering. laughs> <laughs> i would hey, definitely didn't, didn't not wayne make... say in that song if he could he'd trade it off for an automator yeah, yeah. Like yeah. And, and you well, he my, got and it i still remember yeah. tony being mike uh mike roch in the, yep, that was in the in the yep, that's how much yeah, i yeah, watched yeah. watch the dang video right yeah, yeah. yeah. well it's funny because like we used to <laughs> yeah, when, one day's off we, we'd uh check in the hotels Using fake names, and that was my fake hotel Yours name. Yours is Mike, Mike Ross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all right. so great. All right, yeah, I, well, I, I took us from the seriousness all the way to Jack Ashry. Sorry. No, I, I love it, man. I, 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 I think that that it's actually so is, I, is very like in, yeah. uh, indicative of Static X's music that it never took yeah, itself I, super serious. Yeah, we we Dream. we excel in Jack Ashry, so it's all good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the uh, the yeah, last three, thing I wanted to get to is Chub or Boner. I said Chub or <laughs> it's it's as big chub. as like yeah, it's about yeah. it doesn't get much bigger than that. I ain't the, the uh the last thing I wanted to make sure we get into though before we wrap this up is I mean obviously you guys are not just here for your health. Uh yeah. the tour is coming up with uh seven dust also dope yes, lines yeah. of loyalty and wow. then project regeneration volume two comes out pretty shortly january 26th i can tell you i already have it pre-ordered on, on amazon i still buy cds i know you guys always do a great job awesome. with the digipacks and everything so what can people expect who loved project regeneration one like myself i mean the the singles so far have been incredible yeah thanks um if if you liked volume one, then uh, chances are you're gonna like volume two, man. It's, it's uh, you know the same kind of energy, um, you know more of Wayne's vocals and uh, you know his last riffs, and you know I'm, I'm glad it's this is all finally coming out, man. Yeah, like, no shit. Know, we had a couple of couple of delays, but you know I want to make sure we get it right, and uh, I think it's right. So yeah, hope you guys me, agree as like. As a guy working on it behind the scenes, um, I just hope that uh, that people people consume those two records as one piece of work because they really are. Like even though there's a few years in between them, um, they they're all of that music is all from the same spirit. It's all from the same place, and uh, the the first volume. To be perfectly honest, the reason that it got done in the time span it got done is because those were the pieces of work that sort of fell together the quickest because it was all a mess. Like there were a few completed songs, but for the most part, it was just a bunch of piece together, just very, very confusing as a as a producer just, trying to pull it all together. It's like just you know, putting yeah. together the pieces. Yeah. Was an so, <laughs> yeah, so so volume one came together quicker, which is why, you know, the songs that made it onto volume one made it onto volume one. So volume two is actually more challenging than volume one. Um, and me personally, like, I don't know, I guess I favor volume one a little bit. Um, so oh, I'm not you're not selling us on volume two. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't, I'm not that I just can't lie. Like, I'm mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't think volume two Which is, is rare. by any stretch. But again, like Wayne wasn't here, and we 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 were very focused on allowing the the music to be what it was and trying to improve it and trying to make it better. But you can only do so much with vocal takes that are taken by a guy that's no longer here to help take another take or to add this new part. So if we wanted to change things, if we wanted to add new sections to songs, it was a matter of having to, you know, have myself or Tony like sing shit and then blend it and try to treat cheat your ear into not feeling the segue between oh that was Wayne on that part and this next part is not Wayne but it's intended to blend and sound like one cohesive song so it it was a lot of work to uh to to just to make it come together um I like part two it's cool um 
I just again, it's still, I, is it still half uh, half zero songs, half Wayne songs. No, it's it's the it's more Wayne than the like yeah. both albums. It's more like a 70 20 or 70 30 blend, probably most of it's Wayne. Um, but again, like uh, it just. It, I guess all I'm trying to say is for me, I have a very hard time separating the two pieces of work because they're all intertwined. And if I'm, if I'm going to listen to it, I would like to throw all of it into one single playlist and hit shuffle. Then it makes sense to me, but I I don't like looking at them as like separate pieces of work because they're not, they're one big piece of work. Um, And it's, you know, several years of my life like digging through all of this stuff to try and make something out of it like i'm very interested in who knows we haven't even really talked about it it, to great length but i would be interested to see what happened if those three guys went into a studio and decided like hey let's do something that we would call static x 2.0 like what would a new approach of static x sound like because that was not the intention of project regeneration it was very much trying to keep the Wisconsin death trip spirit and make the best ends that we could out of these multiple pieces of incomplete thoughts. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. I just, again, I, I feel like it's one, one solid piece of work. It's not two independent albums. Uh, that's incredible that you guys had to do. I, I'd go insane. Just I try. Did. It's like, <laughs> I know, <laughs> Tony, you're a priority insane. I can just tell still by the face of the beard. Yeah. It's, it, it works. It works. So well. <laughs> Don't lose it. But that's yeah. just, uh, the amount of work that you put in from biggest thing that I got out, I enjoy talking to you guys, but the biggest thing I get out and talk is your guys' work ethic is incredible. And that, that says a lot of your character. And, and I admire the hell out of that. Just how much, not just dedication, just the amount of time, you know, which is dedication, just the, just the hard work you put in it and doing that album like that. I, I listened to the end product. I right. have no idea how much you put and hearing that you had to splice and pee. I, I, holy shit, dude. Yeah, it was years, dude. And it was a lot of really like stuff that was recorded onto digital tapes that were like damaged. So you're trying to extract it off the tape and it's clipping and glitching and yeah. Like literally to get to get a vocal performance that was, let's call it, you know, three minute song. It may have taken me hitting record to transfer a a corrupted digital tape onto a new DAW. I may have had to just to get that three minute take. It may have been 50 edits. Wow. And yeah, like, like, like. Like you hit play and like maybe you get like two, three seconds yeah. before it starts glitching out. And right. Like, yeah, yeah, and, then, and then and then you have to go and, and you have to cut the glitch the, out yeah. and then you have to splice it together and then you have to crossfade it so that you don't hear the glitch. Like it was it was more work than anybody will probably ever know. Or or uh but again, it is what it is. Like that's what we signed up for, and we really wanted to go down that rabbit hole and finish those last works and get them out so that people could enjoy them. Um and also do our best to improve them and try and imagine where Wayne was hoping that it would go, and then bringing you know the original band there to add their parts of the ingredients for the recipe to be complete. Um, is a very interesting experiment. Um, and again, I, I think that if people are judging these Static X albums as you would judge a normal album, like not even grading them on a curve, then like we've hit home runs because you really should be grading these albums on the un- most unbelievable curve you can <laughs> because they really could have sounded like absolute dog shit. Like if I wanted they to play know. you what like Wayne left behind, yeah. so like this is what most people would have just put out and said like, here's Wayne's last works. You'd have been like, yeah, that sounds about what I expected. Not holy shit. That sounds like a finished mastered modern album in 2025. How did you do that with Wayne's yeah. voice? Well, and we didn't yeah, use especially- any AI. Like there was no, this is before people, you know, we started this project in 2017. No one was talking about AI till six months ago. Um, who knows what decisions we would have made if we were starting this project now, maybe we would have taken advantage of some of the technologies like AI to fill some of those gaps. 
but uh, but we didn't do that because uh, it didn't exist at the time that we started, and we wanted it to be more organic and authentic. And um, so yeah, it was challenging, but I I'm glad people like it. Um, but I I definitely, as the producer and as the guy that hears all of the the mistakes and the the just the the imperfections, I would like this album graded on a curve and the curve is dude it's not here <laughs> well yeah. i'm i'm, I'm able to hear it i mean the songs as i said yeah. so far well, i mean are... volume one too like volume one should be graded on a curve as well so i'm, I'm yeah glad you're, you're you're a perfectionist dude you're you're yeah. you're gonna you're just yeah. you're, but that's that's how great people are great people are perfectionists if you're happier with your product then you stop improving and that's yeah that's, that again I, I, it's the same thing we're told in the in special operations community you are never finished you are all and it's you're always training no matter how good you are you are always training and getting better and, and yeah just, yeah it just brings out the you best know, in people our our first uh our first producer Ulrich wild when uh we were getting towards the end of uh making wisconsin death trip he uh he, he said um you know, you, you know, you're never done with an album. You just let it go. Let it go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. very true. Makes, makes and that's the same thing too. Lars Ulrich says in uh, in some kind of monster. But yeah, like all these songs so far, zombie, awesome, yeah, good. Um, I am psyched for it. So <clears throat> for our audience, January 26th, Project Regeneration Volume Two. Um, like I said, Edsel was gracious enough for the last show to put me on the guest list, which I'm not expecting for this tour, but I will be there in Huntington seeing you guys with seven dust and no, you're paying then, full price. You're saying I, I will pay full price. Like, putting like, him way like, the fuck on yeah. top, man. But uh my February <laughs> is insane, guys, because next month in New York City, I am seeing Static X and Seven Dust, of course. Same month I'm seeing Fear Factory play New York City. And I'm seeing Pantera and Lamb of God play Madison Square nice. Garden. That's a pretty cool month in my book. Yeah, yeah I like it. And and Sounds guys, like I, mean, I know yeah. I know you're all getting older, but no, you're going to keep making the video "Sex, Drug, and Rock and Roll." I don't. I want another "Everything <laughs> Sucks" again. I want another video, just like I, I, just wear some knee braces. I don't care. Just just do something, okay? <laughs> but still, that I here I am reminiscing again. But it's still just one of those things where. I listen, see that video. I'm like, man, I remember exactly where I was at watching that video. God. That yeah, that was, that was, was, that was uh, I was a little sneaky with that one where I was like, you know, I'm going to put so much tits and ass, in the <laughs> video, but I'm going to paint them all silver, all silver so that it's not as gratuitous. And it, it ended up coming out great because it, it, it was, it, it, it was did. Exactly and I can't, what I wanted to accomplish. And we can put that on YouTube, but I can't say fuck at the beginning of the show or they'll demonetize it. So. <laughs> right. Don't but want if, that. And, yeah. but no but thank you and it, it's again it's an honor guys to to talk to you and so thanks for coming on again i was i was pissed that i missed you the first time you're a cool dude and tony no worries, you're bro. as cool as i thought you were gonna be as i when i again i was watching you on the videos like that yeah, that's a cool motherfucker right there and yeah keep keep glad i that. didn't disappoint no you didn't man. And, and man you, you you kill that base man just keep that fun yeah. Bringing that funk into the into the just makes it just makes it step a step above. So the low wind thanks, power. Yeah, it is. Thank, thanks Ian, so much, ahead, guys. That's all for this episode of Battleline Podcast. But we're always posting new content on social media. Follow us on Instagram at Battleline Podcast and on Twitter at Battleline Pod. That's an order. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes up every Tuesday. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or your podcast platform of choice. Believe in yourself. Face all challenges head on. And as always, never quit.